in the name of my ancestors. Peace, five and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, MySpace, and Vimeo, and perhaps other places. On the internet, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm, angel snub number seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. This particular topic is very sensitive and I hope that no one takes offense or view what is going to be presented or said as an attack or disrespect to the brother we know of as Minister Louis Farrakhan. I would like to direct this message to the old followers and new believers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as or under the guidance of Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. But of course, this dialogue, this talk, this discussion is good for all of us. But when we speak, when we talk about Brother Farrakhan or Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton, in fact, when we speak about anybody, and this goes for me too because there are many who accuse me of being disrespectful, arrogant, and all these different things. Sometimes we don't see our arrogance. Sometimes we don't see that we have become egotistical. It is always nice. And I embrace, not run away from, those who present to me the man in the mirror. Because if I see that man in the mirror and there is something wrong, sincerely, it's according to the place. There are those who hate Louis Farrakhan. They hate the nation of Islam. And their intent is to destroy and to hurt Brother Farrakhan. So even though their questions, even though they're inquiring, even though their scrutiny may have credibility or be valid, it comes from a harsh place, a wicked place. But I want to tell you, those of you past and present, the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, under the direction of Minister Louis Farrakhan in this house the place or the words that come from this ministry comes from a sincere place a loving place I have no intent and wish no intent to do verbal or physical harm to no black man and woman regardless to whether we agree or disagree. The purpose of Master Farah Muhammad was to come to America to save the black man and woman not to kill, not to make mockery, not to destroy one another but to bring us together and save these who are the descendants of slaves born in America. If I wanted to, I could easily say 
that this internet ministry that I represent has nothing to do with the church. But I will always give the church credit because that's originally where I come from. That's where I originally and many of us who are born black in America, we have roots in Christianity. Just in recent times, many of us was born into Islam or some other type of religious ideas or atheism or whatever. But as a people, you know that we all come from the South and we come from out of the Christian church. No matter where we are today, we know that's the rock that we took. And from the Christian church, I found sincerity. I could feel the love. I could feel the peace, the sincerity in those who believe in the one they call Jesus Christ. And it makes no difference whether you agree or disagree with Christian teachings because if you truly act on it just a little bit your condition would be much better but of course we know that the religion has been corrupted by wicked forces it is not the religion itself it is those who control the religion. It is those who lead the sheep in these religious belief systems and their own hypocrisy, their own corruption that takes something that could be beautiful but it's a stepping stone to another place. It's not for you to stand. Because if it is education, we cannot stay in the kindergarten. Education and knowledge is always a growing process. I could easily say and exempt from this ministry and give no credit to Elijah Muhammad. I could easily exempt Elijah Muhammad and the church because this ministry does not represent the belief in no God. I only make references to, to justice and that which brought us into existence whatever that force may be. Y'all call it God. Some of y'all call it Allah. However you call it. I have not met God or Allah or any of these things. I'm just a justice seeker. And in this life, you would hope that there is justice for all life forms. Why would the, that which brought us into existence give uh, or have favoritism one organism over another. There is no justice. If there is no justice, then we need to make it. It's simple as that. For all the life that is on this planet, no favoritism. That is why we are in the condition that we are in today. Because one life form, regardless if it is man over animal or animal over plant, somebody always has to be superior over another. Outside of the natural dynamics, matter of fact, we don't even know what's natural anymore. Because we've been living for the last few hundred years under artificial means. Artificial life, unnatural lives. And we've been living in an artificial 
on an artificial plane. Living in an artificial life for so long that we believe that it's natural. But for those of us who study, those who do or begin to do their own research into ancient writings and things of that nature, we begin to find out how unnatural we really are. So sooner or later, one day perhaps, we may, once we come into our right state of mind, we begin to act in a natural manner. Then we'll finally know what that is. Right now, we don't know. It's all guesswork. I want to say to the followers, past and present, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the guidance of Minister Louis Farrakhan, I want to say this to, to you. I am your family. I am not your enemy. This is my father. This is your father. And what is so amazing about this man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is that his teachings can take so many forms. Nobody could even guess that Elijah Muhammad's teaching could take the form of what many may call atheism. This is not a robotic teaching if you understand what is being said. We both have the same father and father would be greatly upset looking at all his children so divided at each other's throats. This is your fault. This is our fault. Because we think that we know what daddy said better than another sibling. But we have the same father. So don't ever believe that I am disrespectful to Louis Farrakhan because if it was not for Louis Farrakhan, chances are I wouldn't be talking to you right now. It's simple as that. If it was not for Elijah Muhammad, I would not be talking to you right now. So while we talk to one another, it is a discussion. It is just so that we can, we can, or I can bring up concerns that I see that perhaps you don't see. And then you will tell me, well, we gave you the answer. You don't want to accept the truth. But at the same time, is it also possible because we are all capable of error? Is it also possible that you could be wrong? That you're not seeing things? Because sometimes a person looking on the outside can see better than those who are in the inside. Or are we so arrogant that nobody can't tell us nothing? And if we are so arrogant that nobody can't tell us nothing, you will never be successful. You will be where you're at right now, a slave in America, and when you die, you'll be there, and your children are going to do the same thing. Because unlike Elijah Muhammad, you're not flexible in your thinking. I don't want to take a lot of our time, so let me try to make my points as quickly as as possible. The problem with being a new Muslim follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan, unlike myself back in the 80s, is that contrary to popular belief, 
we are a more smarter people. We are more intelligent. We are more self-thinking. We do our own research. We ask many questions. We're not just people who are running trying to follow somebody and believe in anything that somebody says. Now, back in the day, the reason why so many of these so-called pro-black teachings came into existence is because we needed an outlet to vent. We needed something to give us self-esteem. So when back in the day, when somebody like Marcus Garvey or Noah Jerry Ali or Elijah Muhammad, when all these great men, whomever and many others, whenever they came forth to the people, because the people were physically, not unlike today, the terrorism of Caucasian people, they do this most times. Of course, you know, you have the police shootings and other ways that they, the abortion clinics, the other ways that they attempt to kill us off. But during the time of Elijah Muhammad and Marcus Garvey, Noah John Lee, during those periods of time, even during the 60s, White folks, these racist Caucasian people could knock your door open and kill you outright. There was no justice. They could lynch you from the nearest tree. There was no justice. So black folks did not sit around and argue about who the enemy was. They knew who the enemy was. No doubt. So we needed something to give us self-esteem and strength. Something stronger than the Christian teachings because the reverends and many of the pastors began to bow down and turn the other cheek and just accept the terrorism as a way of life. And many of us was not going to go for it. So just like we were born into and never questioned the slave master's teaching, we also began to embrace these pro-black teachings and we never really questioned them, studied them. We were not self-thinkers. We were and still are emotional. We are still emotional people. And so these pro-black teachings, political teachings, they are embraced because we just need a way out. We need some relief from living in a terroristic society that hates dark-skinned people, especially if you're born in America. Now, in the early 80s when I was a Muslim, follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under Minister Louis Farrakhan, and I want to tell you this really, it was not my intent to be a follower of Louis Farrakhan. My intent was to be a follower of Elijah Muhammad. I did not know who Louis Farrakhan was. I was asked to be a helper of Louis Farrakhan. I did not know that being a helper of Louis Farrakhan means you have to be a believer in Islam and all like that. I never was a person who was into religion. But since I went into that direction as a child, I was only 18 years old and didn't really know it too much, then that's the direction that I went. And I've done that out of emotion and general ignorance. But you have to start some 
place at some time. And I do not regret anything because it all was a learning experience and a stepping stone to other places. When I was in the nation of Islam, or when I was a child, reading the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, no matter where I went, no matter who I talked to, this teaching, where's my book at? This teaching proved itself to be superior over anything that I came upon, even as a little boy, with the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I dealt with adults, 30 years my senior or more, because of the teaching of Elijah Muhammad. But now, like all things, times have changed. And we call then the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, we call it the supreme wisdom. But in 2012, because we are a more researched people, we are a more self-thinking people, the, these teachings that did not have that basically was attacked by be due to emotion. Now they are being attacked by logic and common sense and rationality and a whole lot of other different venues. This teacher never had to be scrutinized under. If I had met somebody like myself when I was a member of the Nation of Islam, I would have to bow down to that wisdom. Because see, I'm not loyal to a belief. I'm not loyal, I'm not loyal to a teaching. I'm a seeker of truth. I want to know what is the real truth. See, so unlike you who become loyal to a person or a teaching, you said that you want truth, but if that truth does not fit into your scheme of how things are supposed to be seen, then you reject that truth. So you are not a truth seeker. You are a fanatic. You are a fan of somebody, someone, or something. I'm not interested in being a fan of Elijah Muhammad. I'm not interested in being a fan of God. I'm not interested in being a fan of Farrakhan. I'm interested in the truth. And because we live and have been living under falsehood for so long, that which was true today might be false tomorrow. It's a stepping stone. It's a growing process. If you are entrapped, When you bang it on the door, it don't fall. It gives little by little. It's very rare that in many places that you get entrapped, that you can just break free easily. We are still living in a slave condition. There are no physical chains, but we are still enslaved mentally still act and behave like the slave of yesterday. But it's a process. It's a process to get up out of this bondage once and for all. And what we're going through right now, brothers and sisters, it's a process of escaping white supremacy or slavery. Elijah Muhammad taught his followers you are not a robot 
You are a self thinker. That's what I was taught in the nation of Islam. Now, if Elijah Muhammad is teaching his followers not to be a robot, be a self thinker, does this accept his own teaching? So, as long as you don't question, as long as you don't uh, investigate the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, then it's all right to do the same to other thoughts and ideas. But since you know that you are right, then there's no need for you to question yourself. If you don't question yourself, how can you be a self-thinker? How are you going to allow that which you didn't create? Because you did not create these teachings. This comes from Elijah Muhammad, and then he got it from a man called Master Farah Muhammad. You have a right, and we have a right to question everything. You don't just put anything in your mouth because you know that putting anything in your mouth could result in your being dead because some things are not meant to be eaten. You have to cook your food in certain ways. You have to chew and process the food in order for it to be digested. And some things don't need to be eaten, period. This is Elijah Muhammad's teaching. Everything is on a level. Everything is a stepping stone. You have to leave the cradle. You can't stay in the kindergarten all the time. Some people are content in living in the eighth grade or functioning on an eighth grade level. You see where they are in society. That's why we try to push our children. We try to push ourselves. We want to try to attain higher knowledge. Some people might believe that an eighth grade education is higher knowledge. But we can tell that by your actions and your behavior. You do the same thing with religious teachings. You can tell where everybody's at by their actions and their behaviors. Not actually by the religion or the political idea itself. Where you're going. I've never seen when I was a Muslim we never ran from a verbal fight. When somebody challenged the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, then we have to, to defend that teaching. When I was a Muslim, there was no YouTube and you could hide behind a picture and somebody could come on your page who is civil, who is courteous, just asking you questions and you can't handle it and you block them and you delete them. That's so cowardly. The followers of Elijah Muhammad under Louis Farrakhan that I see on YouTube are the most weakest people I've ever seen. You are really embarrassed, and I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to tell you that. Why are you going to come into the public and don't expect that somebody's not going to question you, somebody's not going to challenge your idea? And then you punk out First of all, you hide behind a picture. Then you punk out, you block their comments, and you delete them. What if Malcolm was like that? What if Farrakhan himself was like that? That's because y'all don't study for yourself. You going on and you and you dragging on, holding on to Louis Farrakhan's coattails. You don't know yourself. It just sounds good when it comes from the minister. 
You can't deal with the minister. That's what somebody, one of the brothers told me or sisters or whatever, they hide behind a picture. Oh, you can't deal with Firecon. I will tell you this. See, Firecon don't deal with little people like myself. But if all the time arises, Firecon or any of his students, ministers, you can't do nothing with this ministry at all. And it's not bragging, but this is beyond you. Because I don't have to block you. I don't have to delete your comments. Anybody that comes to my pages that speak civil and cordial, I welcome the challenge because these comments, these questions show me my error. They show me my weak spots so I can get stronger and better. And I will leave them, they will leave my page knowing either to agree to disagree or they know they got their butt whoop here. I'm not going for it. Because this ministry represents reality, common sense and logic. And there is no other there's nothing on this planet that can deal with your reality. Has nothing to, be, to, to, to do with belief. I wonder if you are really listening or you just hearing Farrakhan. And I would say this now, the second part of this talk, I'm going to try to go through, through this really, really quick is about Minister Louis Farrakhan's uh, explanation of why he has embraced Scientology. And if you listen to the video besides his explanation, he talks about vanity. And there are so many uh, lectures by Brother Farrakhan that is so wonderful. I really enjoyed what he had to say about vanity. And my question to those who are following, those who are uh, listening to Louis Farrakhan, are you listening? See, if you are listening to Louis Farrakhan, then you don't have you don't have no problem with nothing that I say, because to listen to something is to analyze the sound, so you will know what you're hearing. But if you're hearing, just to hear, don't mean you don't know what is being said or what's making the sound, if you're just hearing. But when you're listening, you're hearing and analyzing the sound. Many of you are just clapping and you're emotional. You're not really listening to nothing that this man is saying. Because you are caught up in the dynamic, the, the emotional side of what is being taught. And see, I'll tell you this. You don't know Elijah Muhammad's teaching. Show me within all the things that Brother Farrakhan said. If you notice, he does not make references to Elijah Muhammad's teaching when he said different things. Because that's not what Elijah Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad never taught those things. Or never did those things. If you cannot, if you are truly a follower of Elijah Muhammad, if you cannot find the reference to what anybody says in this book, Message to the Black Man, The Fall of America, Our Savior Has Arrived, The Theology of Time uh, series, any of the messages, tapes, or records, or books, if there is no reference to what Elijah Muhammad taught, then he did not teach it. This is something 
somebody else has fabricated using or hiding behind Elijah Muhammad. We have a right to question Louis Farrakhan. Has nothing to do with you liking or disliking. We have a right to question our brothers and sisters in the public arena. We have a right to question our leaders and hold everybody accountable. They do it to me. I'm just a little fellow on YouTube. So if they can do it to me and see I embrace it. It's, it's fine and dandy. I don't mind. It's cool. I'm not upset. I'm not deleting comments and all this other kind of crazy. I'm not blocking folks. None of that kind of stuff. It's all right with me. We have a right to question our leadership. And some of y'all are crazy because you fall in love with the way somebody speaks, the way they talk. You become a fanatic, a fan, a fan, of a celebrity follower, celebrity seeker. When you should be looking for truth. When you should be a fan of that which will get us out, out of the condition that we're in. Celebrity has never done nothing for us except help keep us enslaved. Because celebrity makes us comfortable in our oppression. Beyonce can't free you. Bill Cosby ain't can't free you. And those celebrities that do begin to think in a revolutionary sense, then they face the same type of, of uh, attacks by the oppressor. Now, let me just quickly address some of the points, and I'm going to counterpoint some of the things that Brother Farrakhan said. And I want to make this really, really clear. I have no problem if you wish to practice Dianetics or if you see some type of benefit in Dianetics, me, myself, I... That's fine and dandy. It's, it's cool. That's not the point. But see, as a follower of Elijah Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad said that he was taught directly by God. This is the claim that you make. You said that even though Elijah Muhammad is not here, even though Master Farad Muhammad is not here, you claim that they still guide you. They still are here with you. So if Elijah Muhammad was taught directly by God, and you say that God and Elijah Muhammad is with you right now, then what do you need the help and to embrace Scientology for? Did not God, did not the messenger of God give you everything that you needed in order to do what you need to, to do? It worked for Elijah Muhammad. It worked for Elijah Muhammad for over 40 some years. Elijah Muhammad never reached to Dianetics or no other sources. Very successful. The most powerful, it says here, on the back of this message to the black man, it says, a quote from the Reader's Digest, it says, this mild looking man is the most powerful black man in America. And he became that way with no help from Don Ronnie L. Howard, or no other source except Master Farah Muhammad's teaching. Why is this? But now, in 2012, you need help. Something has gone wrong, so in order to make your work easier or, or to make things better for you, you need to go and you found Ron L. Hubbard in Scientology, and Scientology has never done nothing 
for the civil rights movement, nothing for the black people of this nation. Whether what they have is good or bad, me, myself, I could care less. But now, but see, Elijah Muhammad didn't need any outside help because he's Elijah Muhammad. His teaching, he called the supreme wisdom and supreme wisdom don't need any help, especially from those that you claim and you say that are dealt. But since you are not following Elijah Muhammad, you are following Louis Farrakhan, and Louis Farrakhan has become dissatisfied with his own leadership ability. Yes, that's right. So he feels that if his people learn or come up under Dianetics, it'll make his job easier. Elijah Muhammad didn't need that. Don't you think prostitutes carry baggage? Don't you know black folks have been molested since they were children when Elijah Muhammad was here? Everything, all these psychological problems that black folks face today, you don't think that during Elijah Muhammad's time, during Malcolm's time, they did not face the same thing? But Elijah Muhammad didn't need Dianetics. So my issue is not the fact that you want to use Dianetics. My question to you is if, if the messenger of Allah, Elijah Muhammad was taught directly by God, and you said that God and the messenger guide you right now, why would they guide you when they are the power, when they are the wisdom, when they are the supreme ones? Why would they make you or guide you toward Ron L. Hubbard? Well, that don't, that don't make any sense. And Judge Judy says, if it don't make sense, it's not true. If it don't make sense, something is wrong and y'all are not thinking. Now, just because something is a benefit to you, that don't mean that you have to, if it becomes your friend. So if you can learn from ants, many of y'all know what ants look like. So just because I can sit and study ants, we can learn a lot from ants. Matter of fact, if you look at the roadways and a lot of things, there's a lot of research, a lot of the things that you see and you benefit from come from the study of ants. You may know this and you, and you may not know. But this does not mean that we're going to allow ants to live in our house. Well, so just because you find some type of benefit to Dianetics, does that mean all of a sudden me and those who, who teach Dianetics, all of a sudden we friends and buddies, and now you can come to my house because I like your teachings? Just like the example that he said, it makes no difference whether or not that the teacher was racist or not. You just wanted the teacher's knowledge so that you can graduate and get your degree. That does not mean that the teacher is your friend. There was a scene in the movie Shaka Zulu and one of Shaka Zulu's aides was asking Shaka, why are you treating these swallows? Why are you treating these white men like they're your friends? Why are you treating them so nice? Shaka told him, I want their knowledge. I want the power that comes from what they know. That's what I'm after. We ain't friends, we ain't buddies. You have not proven to be a friend. In fact, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, or he taught, 
that white people will, some of them will see the hereafter. But a white man or Caucasian person, until they have studied among the righteous or studied under Islam for 25 years or more, then can they be accepted among the righteous people. These Scientologists are Scientologists. They have no intent to be among the righteous people at all. But you invite them into your house. You're embracing them and loving them like you friends. Just because I like what you teach or I can, or I can benefit from your teaching does not mean we are buddies and friends. And you should question that because at the same time when it's all said and done, in this book, the white man is the devil. You don't never forget that. That's what Elijah Muhammad taught. Now, of course, with with time, things may change. But right now, we're still in the same circumstance. So, this message to the black man is still in effect. Y'all don't know Elijah Muhammad's teaching. You really don't. Now, I'll tell you this about Scientology and I will give them their credit. Everything that Scientologists say or teach about psychiatry, everything they say is 1,000% right. I know that. I experienced it. I lived it. Everything they said and state about psychiatry is correct. But that also brings up another question about them. Since they understand psychiatry, which means they are experts in the mind and mind manipulation. They understand how the brainwashing works. Regardless of psychiatry, they understand the mind. So is that what Louis Farrakhan might be seeking a better way to brainwash his people so he can get better production out of them. Oh, y'all need to think about some of this stuff. Louis Farrakhan said that the nation of, of Islam will never fall. He said that the nation of Islam will never fall. Again, but at the same time, he contradicts himself because then he says, if it does fall, it's because of those who come after him. Wait a minute. If it's not going to fall again, it makes no difference what somebody else does. It's never going to fall. So make up your mind. Is the nation never going to fall again or, or because the those that come after you because they are not faithful enough or whatever their problem is, it'll fall again. I mean, again, it makes no it's just, this does not make any sense. Then those of whom he leaves behind are students. When will they ever grow up? When will they know that they are no, no longer student ministers or student captains or student whatever? They're always in a learning process, uh, process. You can have a degree, but a person that has a degree can still learn. You can't stay a student. Sooner or later, you have to graduate and get your degree. But Farrakhan is keeping all his people a student. So when will they know when they become beyond a student and become a teacher? Or is the only teacher Louis Farrakhan? It's just a lot of questions. And how can Farrakhan judge those who might and might not allow his nation of Islam to fall when he did nothing to stop the fall of Elijah Muhammad's works? He did nothing. He did not challenge Wallace 
Wallace uh, Muhammad, he wants everything to go to nothing, to go to waste. So how can you judge somebody about what they might allow to happen when you, in the original and the best and the successful version of your teaching, you were there and you let it fall, go to nothing. And you went back into the streets and you grew your beard and drinking liquor and smoking cigars and you did these things. And now you are so high and mighty, you want to judge folks. Minister Farrakhan's Nation of Islam has been around since the 1980s. He has had great success, more resources and everything, more than Malcolm and Elijah Muhammad put together. But what has this Nation of Islam produced? What is it doing? Nothing close. How can you have more resources, less obstacles, but you don't have, but you're not nowhere near the success of Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad. There's a problem somewhere. And could that problem, see y'all don't, you don't want to hear it. Could the problem be Lewis himself? Y'all don't want to think about that. Because you're caught up in celebrity. Y'all caught up in, 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 in fanaticism. You're a fan. That's not being disrespectful. Look at the work. It is. It's not happening. You give, give, give money. Always begging for money. What is you doing with all the, the money? What are you doing with all these resources that you that you are uh, are giving? Something is wrong with this picture. And what's wrong with this picture is that Elijah Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad's name is being used. But you're not following Elijah Muhammad. You're following Louis Farrakhan. Elijah is gone. And everybody has their version. Just like the King James version of the Bible. And you don't want to listen to me. Because just like the Christians didn't want to listen to you. When it came to Messenger Muhammad's teaching. So now you have a supreme wisdom to you. A supreme knowledge to you. Because I'm self-thought, self-thinking. I'm not interested in celebrity. Follow yourself, follow your own heart. And question your leadership. And your leadership should be held accountable. Regardless, these are just men. Elijah Muhammad was just a man. Louis Farrakhan is just a man. We cannot allow, just because they... Just because we've grown, had love for them. It's not about being disrespectful. It's not about not being loyal. It's about getting free. And we don't see the results of that. So with that said, I just want brothers and sisters, just for, for us to just think about some of the things that we said. And I want to, and I can say this over and over, and I know many of you don't like it. Because we are loyal to people. We are loyal to celebrity. It's not getting us anywhere. And we are still filled with self-hatred. Because another black man can't tell me nothing. Is Louis Farrakhan so high and mighty? He can't be told nothing? Well, I gave you my our explanation. Your explanation, your answer does not fly. It's simple as that. Something is wrong. And you don't want to deal with that, that error. So you'll keep continuing. So the nation of Islam will continue to be a beggar. Always begging for money. And who is benefiting from the money? Are the believers? Are you? Who's, who's benefiting from any little success that the nation of Islam has? Who's benefiting from it? Is it you? Or the Farrakhan and Elijah Muhammad's children that he wants to put on a pedestal. Come on, y'all gotta think. That's why we need to stop following folks that don't care nothing about you. I'd rather if my if if you can't drive a Mercedes, then I won't drive a 
Mercedes. We are in this together. We're in this fight together. There are no, uh, what they said, no big eyes or little U's or whatever they used to say. There should be no big headness in the nation. But talk to me. We can talk to one another. I'm not your enemy. But we need to get out of this loyalty garbage. This is serious business. We got to grow. We got to step up the ladder. We got to see people. If, if, they are, if they are no good for us, even though we like them, we got to let them go. It's about being free. This ain't no Usher concert. <laughs> Woo! Thanks for listening. This is your brother, Tali Eden Ra. Drop down your comments. Let's talk about it. This was and is Whew, the Rallies Temple on Earth.